That's what he's talking about. You know what Craig's doing right now? He's literally cleaning down every aspect of this studio. Because one thing I never realized about you, maybe even to this day, is you're a cleanophobic. No, it's not no, cleanophobic. No. It's First a... off, I'm gushing blood out of my mouth because uh, <laughs> I bit my tongue eating a Poke Bowl. <laughs> Number one. What does that have to do with cleaning the studio Number profusely? two, I'm not going to speak out of turn about anyone else, but there is a, an employee of ours, a co-employee of ours, <coughs> who... Um, <laughs> You're right over there. Who uh, reached out to us yesterday to let us know that there may be a little COVID going on. Right. And I'm sorry. I'm not going down that road again. So I am now currently scrubbing the studio of all potential germs Well, so that I don't get sick. No, no. And I think that's great. And because we all share a studio, which is great, uh, there's not a lot of time to get in when that person leaves to clean up. So that's what I'm doing. Now, may I, may I question you? Because our coworker was kind enough to reach out to us yeah. in a group text message setting. Yeah. I wrote the gentleman back because why not? Someone writes you, you write him back. Yeah. And you never responded. You speak for the team. Oh, is that yeah. what it is? You're like the, uh, you're Sean Marks. <laughs> yeah, you're the team, you're the team <laughs> spokesman there. Yeah, that's who you are. I love that you use Sean Marks as I mean, example. it wouldn't have killed that to maybe do a two-minute update. He does 30 <laughs> seconds a day for us. Bro, he gave us a Ron Hodges reference. Can't do two minutes? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's what I'm doing right now. I'm effectively uh, bleaching yeah. the studio I know, right now. I smell it, dude. Because, frankly, he shouldn't have come into work. But why did you say something then? I didn't get the text till this morning. Oh, come at that on. point, it was too late. Come on. Like I wasn't going to text him at 2 o'clock in the morning. And the truth is, other than guys like you, which I give you credit for, it's a compliment, most people don't want to come to work. No, they I would know. rather do the show at home. And most way, people. I very much appreciate him reaching out. Yeah. That was the uh, classy thing to do. Hey, I love you. All good. I love you. Your fly's yeah. open. I know, good. It's okay. open for a reason. <laughs> you know why my fly's open? Because it... Just in case. <laughs> you never know when there's going to be an emergency, and you just got to you know, take it out. That's all. <laughs> Did you really know it was open? What happened? Did you really know it was Once open? Once you looked over here, I knew it was oh, open. Okay. Yeah, because you stared at me. You like you burn a hole in my pants with your eyes staring at my junk. Well, I'm happy with you today because Craig's wearing an you Islander know. hat. I happen yeah. to be an Islander I've fan. I've worn it every day this week. Thank you, Islanders. I love the Fisherman logo. Let me ask you a quick question. But you're also wearing it with a Jet sweatshirt, so he's got half of my yeah. team's being represented Let right now. Let me ask you a question. And listen, we have a lot to do today. We'll get to all the uh, the football. Huge game tonight. That impacts the New York Giants, of course, San Francisco and Seattle. I'm trying to I'm trying to understand something. I think this old badass fisherman guy mm -hmm. that is an unpopular logo, I guess, amongst Islander fans, I think it's awesome. Right. I think it's badass. I can't get enough of it. Why do you people hate it so much? I think a lot of it has to do with the era of Islanders hockey and then also the jokes that came so with it. So when did it start? When did it come around? 95, All right, so I well would say. after the, uh, the Stanley Cup dynasty. Well, yeah. Okay. And even well after, at least a few years after, their last <laughs> um, playoff, playoff series win yeah. before they went on the long drought when they upset the Penguins, right? And lost in the conference finals, as you remember. Of course. To the Montreal, Montreal Canadiens. Uh, Habs. <laughs> right. Yeah. So it came at a time in history that was not pleasant. I love it. And they were made fun of them. And Steve Summers on this radio station used to call us the fish sticks. Yeah, Who the well, hell wants to be so known I, as a fish stick? Yeah, but I got to tell you, this, can you, don't you call up uh, the guy that owns the team real quick for me, all right? You don't know his name? Yeah, I do. I, I'm actually friendly with him. His What's daughter's his an Ol badass uh, Le Olympic swimmer, Ledecky. There you go. And John's a great guy. He's a dear personal friend of mine, of course. I got, you got to bring this back. No, they already did. No, no. It's the reverse retro, bro. Reverse my ass. This now needs to be the only logo the Islanders ever use again going forward. <clears throat> I can't get enough Yeah, but of do it. you not understand what I, I just it. said to you? I don't care what you said to yeah, but I, I, I was only asking to keep you a part of the show. No, but there's other Islander fans who have that sentiment. Good, so, so what are we you, doing? Yeah. as the guy who's not an Islander fan, I'm not. who's simply all about looks, and that's fine, I love are it. now trying to represent what most people feel. I want to be clear. I'm not, I don't represent Islander fans, obviously. You just I'm demanded not, it come back permanently. Let me tell you something. Here's what I know. I know fashion. I know style. I know what's hot. 
And I'm telling you right now, this old uh, fish stick guy up here, yeah. the old man in the sea, yeah. would if, if done properly, and you have a guy like looks like him, shows up at games, the whole thing, would be the hottest mascot in <laughs> all of professional sports. What about Sparky? Better than the Phoenix Gorilla. Better than that, um, that whatever they do in Philly with the flyer thing, whatever that is now. Right. That animal. Uh, better than the, I love the fanatic. Better than the fanatic. An old, surly, <laughs> whiskey-drinking badass. <laughs> kind of like, remember in Home Alone? Yeah. The scary guy that he bumps into the market? Yeah, who then beats the bad guys up with the shovel? Yeah. Kind of like old that Old man Marley guy. who lives next door. I don't remember his name. Come on. Guys. So That's you want guy. an old man Marley to be the New Islanders mascot instead I'd, of Sparky? First, I'd like to stop love? bleeding out of my mouth. That's the first thing I'd like. But I'm going to tell you right now, does this guy have a name or no? Uh, the fisherman, I think. I think yeah, he's just a fisherman. He needs a name, like Hank. <laughs> Hank. Yeah. We're not calling him Hank, all right? Because <laughs> when I think name. of Hank, I think of the Rangers goaltender from the past, Henrik Lundqvist. Hey, no I want joke. Hank. Did you call John up? For real? Yeah. I, I need his number if you have it. I know he's a dear personal friend of yours. I don't have a friendship with John Ledecky. Call the Islanders up yeah. real fast and tell him I need to talk to Mr. Ledecky, all right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take care of this right now. I know what he's going to say, though. I he's, know he's going to defend Sparky and say we can't get rid of Sparky. The kids love him, which is true. Sparky's fine for inside the arenas, you know, for kids. I'm right. with you on that. I have no problem. You can keep Sparky around. But this old guy is a badass. Yeah. This old guy puts fear into the, other teams' souls. The only thing I like... I love it. The only thing I like about your rant here is that the idea of an old, surly man as the mascot it's is awesome. actually kind of funny. I mean, look at this. I'm gushing blood. Yeah, there's blood everywhere. Uh, there's blood everywhere. It's like a crime scene here. And what happened? Just because yeah. you bit yourself eating? I bit my tongue eating a Poke Bowl. Huh. And for some reason... It has not yet stopped bleeding. Were you oh, well. eating very fast? Was that the problem? Because you really got to take your time, bro. No. I know um, you're hungry, but. What happened was I was nice. I was minding my own business, as I always do. Mm -hmm. Having a nice leisurely lunch. La -da -da, la -da -da. You're getting a massage, right? I got Fox News on just to see what's going on, right? And someone played audio of that clown boomer Sison from this morning. <laughs> oh, and I bit my tongue. When I heard the continued vitriol uh, and uh, insecurities he has towards me. Um, and then uh, it hasn't stopped bleeding ever since. <laughs> so so, so it's Boomer's blood, essentially. Yeah, it's Boomer caused this uh, bloody tongue. Yeah. yeah well, All Boomer's fault. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I hope they enjoy their dinner tonight. I may have pre-ordered some booze for them. <laughs> have you? On Boomer's card, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah. I assume it's not overly expensive. No, really. no, it is. I ordered them a bottle of Pappy Van Winkle. Isn't that the stuff that's like a ten thousand dollars? It's well for yes, yeah, some places, yeah. Like they've they've ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty five. So I ordered them a bottle, oh, sixty seven dollars a shot. Oh my god! Yo, every uh, <laughs> ounce and a half is another sixty seven bucks. Ring it up. Ring it up. This is, Ring it up. This is the moment. Sorry. This is the moment you've been talking about since you came back. What's that you moment? You said, yeah. like, a, like a prophecy, like Nostradamus. Yeah. You said at some point it's going to go bad. Not because of me, though. I'm just... Well, I'm just, not saying it's because of you. I respond. I'm saying that this yeah. moment right now... That's the moment where it explodes. It's not going to explode. You're just going to have an expensive dinner. That's all. <laughs> wow. And I'm acknowledging, I, I want to be clear. Uh, I did it. I set it up. Right. And you got to pay for it. But, you know, sometimes your mouth uh, writes checks that your ass can't And you don't check. think this is the thing that's going to... How's that go again? <laughs> your mouth can't write checks that your ass can't Your mouth writes a check that keep. your ass can't check. Cash keep. or something. I don't know. Keep. <laughs> writes a check that your ass nah, can't. They're having their uh, morning show... Um, Holiday dinner tonight, right. um, and I'm not going to say the restaurant because that wouldn't be cool, but it's at Wolfgang's on Greenwich Street. <laughs> and I what time it, are they meeting? Six o'clock. <laughs> I may have uh, pre-ordered uh, them a bottle of Pappy. <laughs> How do you think Boomo will respond to this when care. the poppy comes over? A, listen, he got he, it's his table, it's under his name, he's got to pay for it. <laughs> right? Big tough guy. He's got to pay for it, that's all. <laughs> When will people learn? Don't attack my guy. Bad things no, happen you know, to you. The attack today, frankly, was that I would, the company said, why don't you take tomorrow off? The ratings period's over. You're number one. You buried Michael K in that show. It's not even close. It's like four to one in the ratings. Sorry, guys. Um, take Friday off. You're working two jobs. You're doing a great job. And we want to just give you a day off. 
All right, uh, and yet I'm doing the the the, the morning sh the Fox show in the morning. So of course, when you have nothing else to talk about that involves you guys, you talk about me, which is unfortunate. What happens a lot around here. So now the notion is, oh, unacceptable that I'm working at Fox in the morning and then not coming in here, right? And what's crazy about that to me is the fact that Al didn't say this, Jerry didn't say it, Eddie didn't say it, and to a lesser extent, Greg didn't say it. And that is, it's funny that Boomer would have a problem with me working my other job and being given the day off here and not coming in here tomorrow when every year for the last seven years, he goes out to California or New Orleans or Arizona or Texas and films the same garbage show about <laughs> the top 10 Super Bowl commercials of all time and doesn't do the morning show. <laughs> so what I'm trying to figure out is why is it okay for daddy, but it's not okay for anybody else, <laughs> right? Like when he films those Super Bowl commercial shows, and by the way, it's the same show every year, but it's really good. He doesn't work on the radio. So he's choosing CBS over WFAN. Why is that okay? Mm. That's just a question. No, that's a fair question. <clears throat> just throwing it out there because glass houses are yeah. a dangerous place to live. Got to be careful, man. Glass houses are a dangerous place to live when you have nothing but stones inside of it. <laughs> so I just asked the question. What's good for the goose is good for the gander, is it not? And how come not one of those guys brought that up to him this morning? Maybe they forgot. Oh, yeah, they forgot. <laughs> they complain about it every year. <laughs> Boomer, why are you going out to film that same show again and not doing the radio show? So I'm just asking the question. That's all. You have to remember, I know everything. <laughs> That's all. That's Anyway, I hope they have a great time. A well-deserved the free dinner. Well, for they're the gonna drink some Poppy Van Winkle. They'll be and thrilled. they're gonna be drinking uh, some Poppy Van Winkle. So I, I, I think that's a great night. I do have a curiosity to drink something as expensive as that. Just it's not worth see. it though. It's it's it's. I'd have to walk you through it. It's not worth it. It really doesn't taste anything no, special. No, first of all, I don't even like it. I've had it. I don't love it. No. And it's only because they don't make a lot of bottles of it, and it's hard to get those bottles. Right. So it's like a um. It's almost like you know. It's like. It's like when you, everyone's going crazy for those NFTs. There's no reason for it, but someone decided, oh, that should be really expensive now. Right. There's not a lot of them. But, you know, it's not based on anything. They just decided to not make a lot. Happy Van Winkle. It's very hard to get outside of the state of Florida, actually. Um, now, the place they're going to have dinner has some. Uh, the guys will be drinking it tonight, I guess. Very expensive. <laughs> Uh, but, yeah, it's not worth it. It's not a great whiskey. It's like, oh, my God, this is the best thing I've ever drank. And yet people will still buy it. <clears throat> Evan, right now, the, crazy the bottle that they're drinking tonight yeah. retails normally. It's like a $100 bottle. But if you go to eBay right now, five grand. That's insane. So think about this. Hmm. If you have a bottle of booze, how many ounces in a normal bottle? Make it up. 32 ounces? Sure. I don't know. Whatever it is. They're charging at the bar, essentially, $70 for every two ounces. Well. Do the math. Here's the good news. At least Boomer's rich. Right. Right. A little less rich today. Because <laughs> he's buying a $3,000 bottle of Pappy Van Winkle. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he doesn't take out take it out on Alan Eddie and give him less money for the holidays. That'd be a shame. Oh, that would be a shame. I feel bad about like, that. He's like, listen, I got a grand total of 5000 bucks for everybody for Christmas. <laughs> I'm taking it And now I just dropped 3500 on a bottle and stuff <laughs> like that. That would suck. <laughs> that would suck. Nah, he's too good of a guy. He wouldn't do that. Well, I mean, is he, though? I don't really know. Who knows? I'm just saying. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Uh, 877-337-6666. Uh, I saw Al... And uh, Eddie, though, uh, that's how I know where they're going. They were very nice, said hi, the whole thing. They weren't so nice to me on the air, of course, but that's the way, <laughs> that's the way it goes, I suppose. That's yeah. not good. That's not good. <laughs> there you go. Here's Mike in Brooklyn. Mike, what's going on, buddy? Yo, what's happening? Listen, how could you like the Gordon Fisherman? Oh, it's awesome. That is the worst logo in sports. It, to me, it's 
incredible. Listen, I want to be Mike. Mike, he likes it. Let, let, let me see if this uh, answer kind of fits, Mike, and maybe yeah. you see where I'm coming from. He likes it because he's Craig Carton. That's why he likes a <laughs> universally disgusted logo. Now, go ahead, sir. Uh, I would say this. I respect the fact that I'm not an Islander fan, so I don't know the history of it or why you guys don't like I it. I told you why. I the won. team sucked. I yeah. I won until they got that logo. That's how bad it is. Yeah, but I don't. Th- I don't I think. I don't think you're really looking at the logo the appropriate way. No, but that's how fans look at the logo. I don't think. Uh, I you hear know you're you saying. You don't think so. I dude, respect they, what you're saying. Dude, the logo came about in 94, 95. Yeah. Right after the Rangers annihilated them in the postseason. Right. And it disappeared two years later, and they sucked. And it was like ushered in the worst era of Islanders hockey in the franchise's history. Yeah, but it's not the logo's b- fault. It, it's not the fisherman's uh, fault. Bro. Right? It, sort of. It ushered in the worst era of Islanders hockey. Uh, listen, here's the thing. You're not. I don't care about the hockey aspect well, of but it. they do. I don't care about the association with the Islanders either, to be honest. Exactly. All I care about is this old guy on my hat is a badass mascot, and we need more of him yeah. and more of it. We need shirts and tank tops <laughs> and shorts and backpacks. This guy right here invokes fear in the opposition, no, Evan. it invokes pain from the mid-90s. That's all it does. No, nonsense. So I'll answer this for Mike and everybody else. Yeah. Craig likes this logo. I love it. I don't like it. feel what we feel. Agreed. That's I, the answer. And by the way, I take full ownership of that. As long as you know that. I have that. no idea what it's like to be an Islander fan. I can't put myself in your shoes because I'm not a fan, and I wasn't a fan. Do you know fan. who Mike Milbury is? Yeah, of course, coach. You're familiar with yes, him. Yes, I am. What do you think Islander fans think of when the name Mike Milbury comes into their brain? Mike Milbury? Bad hockey, right? Like ugly hockey. Bad hockey. Embarrassing Guys like ho- a Hall of Fame coach. No, 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 no. For the New York Islanders, he was a joke. As a GM, as a head coach, Wasn't he, with the he Bruins was awful. For a bit? I, I'm talking about the Islanders. I'm just asking. It actually led to one of my favorite moments in the history of this radio station when Christopher Mad Dog Russo, I'm not sure you guys have heard of him, hasn't been here for a while, yeah. but Russo said to Mike Milbury on the air, why do you still have a job? It was one of the great questions slash sentences in the history. I don't know, maybe because he's like a Hall of Fame coach. Bro. Yeah. He was a disaster. So when you think of Mike Milbury, and he was never a Hall of Fame coach, all right? He was just a tough player that took cheap shots at people. That's all he was. I like him. You like him. Yeah, you know why? Why? Because he's got a tough guy attitude like the fisherman. (laughs) (laughs) That's why. Yeah, I like tough guys. Okay. That's right, tough guys. All right. That's what I like. I like competent people. That's what I like. You'd say Mike Milbury's incompetent? Oh, dude, he was one of the worst executive slash coaches in the history of the franchise. Is that right? I don't give a rat's ass about him as a player with the Boston Bruins. I don't care about that. I care about what he did here. And when I think of the Fisherman logo, I think of his face. And when I think of his face, I want to puke. Does that all make sense to you now, Craig? I hear you. Thank you. I respect your fandom. Thank you. I want to be clear. I'm not an Islander fan. No kidding. But I love this fisherman. (laughs) This whole bastard's got something in his DNA that we could all use a little bit of. (laughs) We got a little bit, a little bit. Like uh, we're all getting a little soft as we get older. This old bastard doesn't take crap from nobody. (laughs) Yeah. Matter of fact, I wish the Knicks would have an old guy. like. Well, they do. Right, Boomer. (laughs) <laughs> um, no, I wish the New York Knicks had an old man mascot like this. Uh, I wish the New York Jets had an old man mascot like this. We do, Joe Namath. Also true. Yeah, I'm telling you, I love it. I love it. Here's Peter and Roslyn. Peter, what's going on? Hey, man. Uh, listen, I've got bottles of Pappy. If you want to come to my store and have a drink with me, I'd be happy to open one up for you. You can taste it and have some. Well, I've had it. Evan's never had it. I think it's overrated, you personally. Yeah. Well, you, what do you like? What do I like? I like Honey Jack. I like 1800. I mean, I like Grand Marnier. I like Bubblegum sure. Vodka. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> By the tough. way, I tell That's you what, tough. have you ever seen the uh, Netflix show Heist? Yes, I have. You know the one I'm talking about, about the Pappy Gate? Yes, sir. So I think uh, I think I told Evan about this before. If I Stop me if you want. Uh, it, it's there's a company called Buffalo Trace, American whiskey company, right? And they make Pappy Van Winkle there, same um, manufacturer, right? Same distillery. And this guy who's like a badass softball player, 
making like 30 grand a year, you know, blue collar town in Kentucky, uh, started selling Pappy out of like the back of his car because it's sitting there. Nobody cared about it. It wasn't a big deal. And it became the largest whiskey heist in American history. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then Pappy, because of that, all of a sudden became known like, oh, people want to go to jail for this whiskey. Right. We better go get some. And then they started producing less of it and less of it. Hard to get. It's a brilliant strategy. And very expensive now. Yeah. But it's literally. But it's not that good. It's like a. Hundred dollar bottle of whiskey. So do you order it or buy it based on like showing off how rich you are? Essentially, now yes. Yeah. It's a, why it's else a, would you get? It's it? a status symbol now. Right. Right. Yes, but back in the day, it was just another whiskey so nobody ever so heard you of. You did Boomer a favor. I'm sure he would want to do that for the boys anyway. All those guys wouldn't appreciate Pappy Van Winkle. <laughs> I mean, a Boomer's not going to appreciate the bill. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, glass houses. Glass houses. <laughs> it's a funny place to live, that glass house, isn't it? <laughs> that being said, I wish them all a very happy holiday. <laughs> a blessed day, too. A by blessed the way. <laughs> day and a happy holiday to all. Yeah. They even told they asked me to stop by their dinner. Oh, really? Pop on in and say hi. Are you going to? I don't know. You should. Well, you know, I would. But that Holland Tunnel is such a bitch at six o'clock at night. <laughs> I get you. I got to tell you, if you get it in the wrong direction, or at the wrong exact time, you could go from five minutes to an hour. Yes. And no, I've I don't experienced like, it. Yeah, like I don't want to risk that. Plus, what are you going to do there? You're going to say hi to Al, Jerry, Boomer, Gio, and then well, you're no, like, bored. I mean, if I went, I wouldn't sit. I would just pop in and go, hey, fells, have a blessed weekend. <laughs> I won't be here enjoy, tomorrow. Enjoy the whiskey. <laughs> yeah, enjoy the pappy. Boomer, nice of you to buy it. I'm going to have a three-day radio weekend. <laughs> that, for some reason, bothers you. <laughs> anyway, what is this right here? Mike White says he has no doubt that he's starting against the Lions. So that's according to Connor Hughes. Mike White starting on Sunday no doubt. against Detroit. There was no question. We'll get into the football coming up because tonight is a game that has such a major impact on the New York Giants from a standpoint of if San Francisco beat Seattle, in a, we'll walk you through it, it actually gives the Giants some breathing room. Not a lot of it. Well, it guarantees that the Giants will leave this weekend as a playoff team. Correct. Win or lose to Washington. Now, that may not last when you look at the future schedule of the Lions in Seattle and the Giants eventually have to win a game. Yeah. And if you lose to Washington, you're going to think to yourself, where are these wins coming from? But if you get a help Night from San Francisco. And they may not have uh, uh, Purdy playing tonight. It might be Josh he's Johnson. Playing. Oh, he's did playing. they announce that? Okay, Adam good. Schefter tweeted about uh, a little while ago. Okay. He's good to go for tonight. Great. But it assures the Giants at least go into the weekend as a playoff team. Or go out of the weekend as a playoff right. team. Meaning you're down to three games left and you're in the seventh spot. Right. But no guarantee. Oh, it's so. a monstrous game tonight. Yeah, you no are, if you're a Giant fan... You're a diehard San Francisco 49er fan tonight. Yeah. That's all you want. San Francisco clinches the division, and it effectively knocks Seattle potentially two full games behind you if you take care of business against Washington. Now, they are getting Kenneth Walker back, but oh, they're facing the number one run defense in the NFL. Good luck with that. Right. Kenny Walker comes back off an ankle injury. San Francisco only gives up 70 yards a game. Yeah. On the, on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> Something's got to get him. No, I get you. All right. 877-337-6666. Carton and Roberts on the fan. We are live from the Town Fair Tire Studios, powered by Town Fair Tire. Nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. We are beginning week 15 tonight in the NFL, like we talked about. And you can bet on this game with FanDuel Sportsbook. Week 15 can kick off with NFL. Same game parlay insurance, courtesy of FanDuel. If you haven't tried it, if you're new to FanDuel or you already have an account, you're good to go with this promotion. Get free bets back if your four-plus leg Thursday night same game parlay falls one leg short. That's how it works. But you can bet on anything from this game. We talked about Kenneth Walker. Maybe it's about around him. Maybe it's about Geno Smith. Maybe it's just the money line, the over-under. Completely up to you. The promo code to use upon signing up is Evan, E-V-A-N, FanDuel Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. 21 and over, physically present in New York. Refund issued as non-withdrawable free bets expire seven days after receipt. Max free bet $25. 
Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com for help with a gambling problem. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY 467-369. And I'm being told that the uh, 78 corridor in New Jersey, uh, uh, there's like a uh, blizzard right now. What? Yeah. Right yeah. now? We're, uh, snow falling heavy right now. Oh, wow. I don't know how long it's supposed to last, but obviously we appreciate you listening. Uh, be careful. It's the Route 78 corridor uh, right outside the uh, Holland Tunnel. So there you go.